Okay, welcome everyone to our New GMP's webinar in celebration of International Women's Day. Thank you very much for joining. My name is Peter Monkhouse, and I'll be the in the background here, but let me introduce uh, Joanna Tibbick, my uh, partner uh, with New GMP, and uh, who will be hosting the panel discussion with three amazing women. And thank you very much for joining. Joanna, in her own right, is quite a remarkable person. She has a, had a very successful career, uh, including executive leadership roles in a number of Canadian financial institutions here in Canada. And she's an entrepreneur as well, which is what we'll be talking about as we go through both leadership and entrepreneur. So as not only being a leader in, in organizations, she's a leader as, as an instructor with me at the University of Toronto and other uh, engagements that we have. And she started a couple of companies, including the one new Gen P that she and I co-founded a little over a year ago, of which we are talking about product ownership and how uh, products help um, organizations achieve their strategic objectives. Although for this webinar, we'll take a little different of stance again to recognize International Women's Day. So enough said about me. So Joanna, over to you. Thank you so much, Peter. And again, thank you so much for all your support. Like as a woman, um, I find that during my career it's so important to have the support of others. And as I started my career uh, working in IT, I found that I was sometimes lonely as a woman there. I went to conferences where I was the only woman in the room and I didn't feel comfortable at all. And I felt that I needed some diversity and some other women to be there. So I always, um, you know, I, I spend my career uh, trying to coach and um, inspire other women to do what they love, but also to get into those um, workplaces where they didn't feel that they had a place or they didn't feel confident enough to go there. So thank you so much. Uh, happy International Women's Day. Um, I really, um, uh, I love having today Meta, Rene and Teresa. These are the women that uh, um, crossed my path uh, as I was, um, you know, either in the corporate life or as an entrepreneur. And um, they, they uh, basically inspired me. So one of the things that I'd like to share with you is, I don't know if you know, but I grew up in Eastern Europe. And in Eastern Europe, uh, we celebrate women every March 8th since I was born. So what I remember of March 8th was my, my father waking up early in the morning, going to the flower shop and buying my mother's flowers because otherwise he would know that he wouldn't find any flowers by the end of the day. So that, that was one of the things that he really needed to do early in the morning, come back home, you know, my mom would wake up and they, they had a very happy marriage for 43 years. And I was very, you know, happy to watch them and how my, my father always remembered this day. And uh, how I, that's how I grew up. I grew up appreciating women and every March 8th, I would appreciate the women in my life. And I continued, I came here and I continued to do that. And that's why I have these three amazing ladies here to tell them that I appreciate them and to celebrate together International Women's Day. So what I would do, I would introduce each of them and then we will go through a set of questions. I have some questions prepared for them. And then please ask your questions for these amazing women uh, and we will monitor the chat to see the questions that you you are asking, or if you want to enable your microphone and ask directly, that's fine as well. So I will start with Mete. So I uh, met uh, Mete at a brand storytelling event with Mark Evans. We had Mark at the webinar last uh, last month, and I, I the one thing that I got out of that webinar was not only the knowledge of brand storytelling, but I had a great relationship with Meta. So I met her and then we started talking about our businesses and how we can collaborate. And I loved her attitude. She was always smiling. She was willing to help. And this is what we want women to do for us, to help each other, you know, and, and make sure that when you reach to a woman in your life, you get that, that welcoming response. 
So Meta has her own uh, business, as you can see, Meta Space. Um, it's uh, wonderful to see how she's bringing that Danish roots into the um, North American market. That's what I appreciated about her. Uh, innovation, creativity, bringing new stuff and inspiring people. And uh, she's, she's a, a, an achieved businesswoman. She has this practice and this business. She has employees uh, and, and some of them are women and they look up to her. So I saw her in action and I really loved what she was doing there. So Meta, is there anything else that you want to, to tell about yourself? No, I just really appreciate it. Thank you for that intro. And thank you for, for, um, for inviting me to this event. And thank you for actually having the event. Um, so I come from a place where we, I don't remember really celebrating Women's Day because it's, it's kind of more of an, a norm. I think women and men are very equal where I'm coming from. So um, yeah, so we have come far. There's still further way to go, but it's, um, it's a big support, uh, support there for women. Perfect. Thank you so much. So our uh, next guest is Rene, and uh, I would like I'd like to ask everybody to put yourselves on mute if possible. Thank you. So Rene and I met at another event. So that was about building your own brand. So uh, I remember Rene coming to me, and we we share this background together because we worked in the corporate life. And we decided at some point to live the corporate life and do something on our own. So we connected right away. We met for lunch and we talked. And I am so amazed. Like every time I, I uh, open my LinkedIn, I find something from Renee there, like an inspiration, how she's helping women. And her business is about style and dressing, uh, especially women up for the challenge and, and inspiring women to be confident. Um, and uh, how, how they dress makes them confident, makes them tell the story about themselves. And that, that's what inspired me as well. And you can see maybe I, I have to take some, some uh, uh, style uh, lessons from you, Rene. So I'll take advantage of that 30 uh, minute uh, talk for sure in the future. <laughs> Um, and um, this is this is how she she creates these great women and and brings their stories forward, and and that's uh, that's what inspired me. So, Rena, anything else that you'd like to add? Johanna, thank you so much for having me. It's just so awesome to be here and to be with such you know strong women who are doing things and helping to empower other women. That that helping women really stand up for themselves and to own their power really something that I'm so passionate about. And, you know, we all have a story and I like to say that how we show up is our style story, right? It's how we communicate. It's how we say who we are without speaking. And so, you know, my real passion is to help women to ensure that their image really aligns with their personal brand and how they want to introduce themselves to the world. And when that happens, the energy is, is magnetic. And I absolutely love to see that. And that's really what um, I enjoy doing. So I'm great, great to be here. Thank you so much. Um, so our um, um, third uh, guest is Teresa Smith. And um, Teresa and I, um, I, I think uh, we come from that corporate life as well. And uh, I worked with Tribal Scale at some point, and I had in my network some people from Tribal Scale, including Theresa, but I didn't meet uh, Theresa. So one day I reached out to her on LinkedIn, and she right away responded. And of course, she was a VP of this organization, and sometimes... Uh, you know, not that uh, we don't want to talk to people, maybe, you know, we don't talk to all people or we ignore, but she responded right away. And we went uh, for coffee and we had such a great conversation about uh, leadership and coaching and how we can help women uh, and, and how we, we do this uh, uh, coaching environment. And I watched her over the years, how she built her company around coaching and mentoring and, and leadership and talking from her experience, because that's what it is in terms of coaching. Not We were talking about here, not giving advice and telling people how to do it, but just talking from your experience and let the people kind of select 
what they would do as well in in their career and she's she's an inspiring and talented woman and she gives away so much i uh, i watch every friday she has this uh, um appreciation friday where she gives thanks uh, to uh what happened to her and showing gratitude and this is amazing you know thinking that one day a week we should just stop and give gratitude for for the people in our lives and for what happening to us during the week. Amazing, Teresa. Uh, Do you have anything else to add about yourself? Joanna, thank you for that. Those are very kind words. Um, And I want to thank you for hosting us today. Um, And I want to say on International Women's Day, I, you know, it like Meta, it's not something that I have historically, like as a small child, I don't remember celebrating International Women's Day. I love your story and the experience that you saw with your parents. For me, it really is celebrating women regardless of their role, whether they're leaders or not, um, regardless of whether they are uh, choose to do their work at home or out in the corporate world or for themselves like we are doing here. Um, And one of my uh, deeply held beliefs is that we all have the potential to be great leaders. And you'll see behind me here, I have um, this piece of art that was made by my beautiful friend, Stephanie Chang. And it is of course, RBG. And RBG is a reminder for me of Uh, what leadership can look like. We are so often presented with a view of leadership that is loud or brash or um, uh, spotlight seeking. And she is a perfect example of the fact that leadership can look many different ways. And if we show up as our best selves and our most authentic selves, with our own stories, then we are leading. Um, So yeah, she's an inspiration for me and I'm really thrilled to be here today. So thank you. Thank you so much. So for those of you, as I said, uh, please make sure that you ask questions, that you put the questions in the chat and please stick around as we have door prizes. So we're offering amazing door prizes at the end. So if you stick around, you'll have a chance to win one of these prizes that we are offering. So I will start with a question for all of you. So, and I will start with Rene to answer. So um, I guess we all have that moment in our lives when something clicks in our mind to um, go and, and build our own business and our brand. What was that moment in your career when you realized that you wanted to go on your own and build your business? Well, you know, um, you know, I've built my, a very successful career over years and I've really climbed to the top. I've reached the top of this mountain. And when I looked around, I'm like, oh, my goodness, I'm on the wrong mountain. Right. It, it no longer served me. I was really it wasn't, you know, I wasn't excited about it. And I just knew there had to be a better way for me to pour into women, for me to to be more and do more and serve the world. And I said, you know what? I really love is fashion and style. I really love to see the transformation that happens. Because I knew when I looked good, I was able to walk into these boardrooms. I was able to, you know, own my space and own and just feel confident, feel different. And if I could help women to do that, that's really what I wanted to do. And so I decided, you know, I'm going to give it a shot. I've, I've done, I've been very successful for these companies. I'm going to bet on me. And it was at that time, about two years ago, 2018, I said, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to take a chance on me and do what I love, what I'm passionate about and help women. And I start, started my company, Let's Get Dressed Now at that time. Nice. Yes. So inspiring. What about you, Theresa? Yeah. Um, well, not unlike Renee, I've had a corporate, successful corporate life. I'd spent about a little over 20 years in the corporate world. Um, and I had really enjoyed my career there for the most part. And I got to the point where I was like, okay, I kind of feel like I don't want to work for other people like this anymore. I've done my bit helping other people build other businesses. I had had a small experience where I started a business with um, three close friends of mine. And that was amazing, but it wasn't my own vision. So I didn't have the passion for the work itself, but I had this taste of what it was like to work for myself. 
And, uh, and I thought, okay, I want to do more of that. Um, but what is that going to look like? And as I reflected back over my career, what became very, very clear for me was where I had had my biggest impact was also where I felt the greatest fulfillment. And that was in helping others show up and be their best selves and achieve their goals. So as a leader, I had, um, as a senior leader, I had other leaders that reported into me. And I felt very strongly about the impact that leaders have, not just on the work life of people, but on people's lives in general. And, um, and it became very clear to me that in order to have the greatest impact, I wanted to work with leaders or aspiring leaders um, to help them be the best that they can be because their impact is so broad. The ripple effect is so wide. And as soon as I realized, okay, I don't want to do it for somebody else. I want to do it for me. I want to focus on the stuff that has always most fulfilled me and where I feel like I've had the biggest impact. It became very clear from there. Okay, well, it's going to look like a coaching and consulting business of some sort. And I would say the thing about owning your own business, and I don't know if this is the same experience for Renee and Meta and for you, but it continues to evolve. It's never done. It just continues to grow and take shape. And, um, and I'm enjoying just allowing it to do that. Amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, so Meta, what about your experience? Yeah, I have to say it, it's never ending and it shouldn't be ending. It should be continuing evolving and you should just continue seeing what's happening around you and, and follow that path. Uh, so I started my business twice. Um, I did it in Denmark. I had taken enough courses. I've done enough things. And at one point, you just got to you just have to go uh, quit my job, start my business. And, uh, and it's kind of evolved from there. So I did that a few years in Denmark and then coming to Canada and I had to kind of start all over again. But this time I didn't really have my network. I didn't have sort of, I had my husband's family, but that's kind of where I started from. So um, it required me to be very, um, sort of get myself out there. Started doing a few seminars with the people that were sort of closest to me. My the women and the people on my street and, and some family gatherings. And then it's just a matter of just jumping out and going out there, get a bank account, start your business, and it's going to take you amazing places. Amazing. So I think we all share that, you know, like we all have to do that networking and build and everything. So amazing and that that's a story as well for for new people coming to Canada and that's something that I struggled with you know coming here with my husband and for luggages and uh, trying to uh, I we didn't know anyone here not one soul we met somebody on the internet and they they picked us up from the airport and and basically that that's something that uh, you know you you feel that fulfillment that you coming here, then you are successful. So um, amazing story. So now I'd like to, to move a little bit, you know, uh, you are successful business women, you have businesses. And, and now let's talk about this pandemic that hit us. And, uh, you know, we don't have to say too much about it and how it changed our life, but also how it changed our businesses. And you started your businesses before the pandemic. Uh, you had a little bit of a run, you know, before the pandemic, and then the pandemic hit. And like all of us, we needed to adjust. So what was your strategy to adjust? What did you do to adjust and make sure that as, as Theresa was saying, and we all agree that it's evolving, right? So how did you uh, make the, that leap into the new world? So I will start with um, um, uh, Mete. Yeah, so um, what, what the most, uh, the biggest uh, part of our business was actually designing office spaces. And as you can all imagine, that went for a full stop, uh, which was like devastating. So we had sort of the realizations like, oh my God, what are we going to do? Um, I have also done a few sort of homes, uh, sort of on the side. And I had always, always had this dream about writing a book. So I kind of... We were, we were agile, we needed to kind of move in a direction that we can kind of see after we get over the, the shock. 
um, because we didn't know how long this was going to take. But the thing that I think we did was never stop. You just need to sort of find new ways to, to channel what you can do. Um, so we're doing a lot more homes, but we're also finding areas uh, to help people with their own home offices. Um, what has really encouraged us is like, you know how we get attracted by our environment. It has taught people, why do they have an office space? What's working in their home office? Why is it not working? So for, for me, it's actually been, the timing has been as, as hard as it's been, it's also been a good timing because it's opened completely new doors for us. Uh, our staff has learned that we can actually work from different places. So that's another thing that when you have staff, you need to really cater to uh, how they're feeling at home all of a sudden. So um, I think we have just broadened the business and I mean, people are going to come back to office spaces, but it's going to be in a new way, which is really exciting. Nice. Amazing. So, um, Rene, what about you? What, uh, how, how did that, this uh, pandemic change your business? Well, when you think about my business, right, my business is uber personal. I am in women's personal space. I am in their closets. I'm in their houses. I am talking about their bodies and some of their insecurities. So that was really, you know, that's challenging. And of course, and I'm face to face, but I just knew that, you know, I thought about what can, how can I help my clients? What do they need now? And so I just utilized, I utilized the platforms that we have. And I just, all of my services now are virtual and I do closet edits virtually. I shop for them virtually. I give them a virtual closet. So everything is virtual. And, you know, I, there is that part where, people really do like that face-to-face -face and, and hands-on, but I really try to make it very personal, right? And when we speak, when, when we're on, on camera. So that's what I've done. I've just really utilized the technology and really brought my bit, pivoted my business. And I was doing some virtual before, but definitely, definitely not to this extent. And, um, and, you know, clients love it. They actually get more from me in this virtual realm than they got before. Um, yeah, so it's and then and then the other thing is that I can serve more women, right? Women all over the world, as we all can because we're virtual. So you know that's how I've had to change, and it's you know it, it's been it's been lovely, amazing. What about you, Teresa? Yeah, so similar to what Renee was just saying at the end there, I think the biggest challenge that I saw initially was a lot of my. Um, outgoing kind of communication or my outbound networking was in person. So uh, when I launched my business, I really had been uh, meeting with my network, sharing what I was doing, you know, testing my hypotheses, my, my product, getting feedback, adjusting. And that was how I was getting my first clients. And then when the pandemic hit, there was no more outward bound, like no more meeting with people, no more coffee chats, no more, let's have a bite of lunch and let me tell you what I'm doing sort of thing. Um, so initially it was, it was a little bit scary in that regard, but ultimately it turned out to be quite a gift because what I started doing was getting outside my comfort zone. And you mentioned my gratitude Friday posts. Um, I started posting much more regularly on all of the platforms where I have a presence and, um, and telling my story in a slightly different way. So what I would have done in person would have been different from what I am currently doing online. My, my work was always intended or primarily intended to be done via Zoom anyway. So the coaching um, happens through Zoom unless someone wanted me to come in and do a consulting gig. So there was no huge change there with the, with the exception of two things, how I was finding my clients. And then often when I do a kickoff with a new one-on-one -on -one coaching client, because I had been thinking small, I'd been thinking my, my, my small world, the world that I already knew, that was going to be in person. So what I would do is rent a breather space and I would meet with a client for three or four hours, depending on the coaching program that they were doing. And we would have this deep dive. Well, now I have a whiteboard in my office 
And we do it via Zoom. It sounds crazy to spend three or four hours with somebody over Zoom, but you would be surprised at how quickly it goes. So that was the big thing. The second thing being now my platform for getting my message out was no longer me meeting with my network. It broadened to all those social platforms. The result of that has been, like Renee said, like global clients. I have clients in, I have a client in Prague, I have a client in Houston, I have a client in Philadelphia, I have a client in New York. Those clients are not people that I would have sat down and had a coffee with at the Soho house. <laughs> so it's an entirely different world because I had to pivot and turn everything into uh, an online platform. Yes, and that that's one thing that I think this pandemic, because I can go on LinkedIn and I can hear from Teresa, I can hear from Renee, I can hear from Meta and what they are doing and their, you know, how they're reinventing and what they are posting. So that's one thing that I'm grateful for. Um, I, I do hope that we're going to go back to meet uh, in person, but uh, that that actually helps me a lot, you know, in, in also with my business to see what others are doing out there and they posting more and more on LinkedIn or uh, Instagram or Facebook. And that's something that we can all learn from each other. So this is great. I just wanted to remind uh, uh, everyone uh, here, if you could post your questions, if you have questions, if you have comments, if you have feedback, anything, you know, don't be shy. This is, as you see, like a, a, a great challenge that we're trying to have. So any question is a great question. Um, so please uh, put them in there. So now I'd like to go into some uh, uh, personal questions. So I'll start with Mete. And I'll ask her, what is unique about your product? What do you think is that unique feature? Because we keep talking about, uh, and, and Pira and I keep talking about in, in, in our courses about product management, that you need to build that unique feature for your product. And, and that will characterize the entire product that you have. What's, what's that unique feature? So I think what's unique about the kind of design that I do and offer is it's, um, I call it human-centered design. So, and I also call it design inside out. It really means um, it's, it's about humans. It's humans that are working in the space. It's humans that are uh, functioning everywhere. So I learned what, how we get affected by the surroundings that we're in. And we know more than anything, how that is impacting us today. I think for the most part, uh, people would just go to work and they go home and they like they don't really think about the impact it has. But now they can actually see where they're productive, where they're not. And I know why things are working or not working. And it has a huge um, impact on like the colors that you use, the lighting that you use with the colors that you have, the kind of materials that you have in your space and the, the way you, you, you have your layout it all has an impact. It's, it's giving you signals to yourself, to your staff, to anyone that enters your space. So that's also why I started writing this book is about taking your space. It's about really embracing what it is, the space, just looking at it in a different way and not just like an expense that you have to have a, as, a, as a CEO, you have to have the space for the people. And this whole pandemic has really taught people why we have the space, what are we missing? Um, and how can we create that space? So I think my design comes from a very human, um, uh, it starts with the humans that are in the space. And you can, you can get so much more out of the people, out of like the human capital, but it is really true. If you create space and you give the right signals to the people that are in there, you get them embraced with why you have your business to begin with, why they're doing the work and get them co to contribute into the work. Interesting, very, very interesting because that's what I feel as well. Like, because I'm working from home, I want this space to be, to be cozy and where I feel great, you know, and, and I, I can see your backgrounds and I can feel happy, you know, like I can see pictures in the background and I can see I, we can get in everybody's uh, space basically with these zoom meetings and you you find a piece of their background so what what they have in the houses and everything and I think that that's so important but also to yourself like you need to really to like what um and I would encourage anybody that is starting the business to really take a space take a space if you're working from home take a space and give your 
your new idea, give it space to grow, like actually carve out an area. That's not necessarily where you sit all day and work, but it's a place where you are giving your new business a, a space to grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. That's a great, uh, that's a, uh, a great advice. Anything <laughs> to, yes. Anything to add, uh, Teresa or Renee? I just want to know what uh, Meta is thinking about all our backgrounds right now. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, like Renee, yeah, like you, there's no doubt what you, what you, the punch that you, you give the women and uh, Teresa, you definitely bringing the focus into it. So it's great. Perfect. So we'll have to chat at the end, you know, yeah. how we dress, how yeah. our spaces look, <laughs> any coaching advice, you know, yeah. how we presented ourselves. So well, this is amazing. We need, we need all, all, everything that we're talking, like the three different things or the four different things that we're combining here today. It's not just one thing. It's, it's a, it's a right. combination of what you need yeah. uh, to achieve your success. Yes. Yes. And, and that, that's the beauty of it that we talked about at the beginning, like com combining all this perspective. This is amazing. Yeah. So next question is for Teresa. Um, what are you enjoying the most about your, your job and coaching people and meeting people and uh, being in their lives and, and, you know, inspiring them and from the feedback that they are uh, giving you, what, what do you capture? Yeah. Yeah, there are so many things that I love about my work. It is fulfilling on so many levels. I am an ambivert. So I, I sit in the middle of the extrovert, introvert kind of spectrum. And so, you know, working one on one with individuals is really fulfilling with me. I also do teamwork and that's exciting. Um, but in that one on one work, um, yeah, there are just, there are all kinds of moments. There's joy, there's laughter, there's fun. Fun is one of my core values. So I always want to make sure that there is a level of fun in the work that we're doing. Um, you know, sometimes it's hard too. This is, you know, when you're, one of my underlying beliefs is that personal development is professional development. If you want to be a better leader, there's work to do to be a better human. And that's going to result in better leadership. And that's not always easy work. Um, sometimes we have to look deep and, and it can be dark in there. Um, but I would say some of my most fulfilling moments have been when I have s witnessed a shift happen for a client. I'm thinking about a particular client right now I was working with and uh, there was something that had been dogging her most of her adult life, something that she had been struggling with that she just felt like if she could just achieve this, um, it, would, it would change everything for her. And as we were going through our session together, she had a major shift around it. And I could see her energy change, her butt, like he, even through Zoom, uh, Renee, I'm sure you feel this all the time. Meta, you can probably read a room through Zoom, but I could, I could sense her energy change. There was a massive shift. And, you know, she just, she had tears, but these were tears of relief and joy. It was like, oh my God, it just occurred to me. Like it was a, it was as if a, a door opened and she yes. could see through it all of a sudden and it was like oh my god I thought it was a wall and you know it wasn't so that's those, so powerful um, so powerful Teresa because that though what you're speaking about is something that I I see all the time with my clients as well it's that transformation that happens right when you go from how you're showing up to how you really want to show up and you look in the mirror, I call them mirror transformations. And the women look in the mirror and they're like, oh my goodness, I'm beautiful. Or, oh my goodness, I never thought I could look like this. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, I feel like a different person. You know, it is so empowering. And to see that shift, that transformation, that it's just clothes, right? But really it's not just clothes. For, I'm talking about for me, right? It's not just clothes. It's just, it's just something transformative about when you know you look good and you feel good. It just changes the game. It changes your mind. And as you said, your energy, that energy is different. It's, it shifts and you become magnetic. People see that. People read your energy. People get your energy, even virtually, right? People can see that energy and it, it changes the game. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, that's amazing because sometimes I talk to some people and they suck all my energy, you know. <laughs> But then other times when I talk with some people like you here, like I get so excited. I yes. get so much energy. I could do anything after that. So right. it, it's it's amazing how we, we uh, um, you know, transmit that energy to each other or, you know, some people, they take that energy away from you. So that's so uh, true. And, you know, from my, my lens, of course, I think from my lens, you know, when you think about how you are dressed or even sometimes you get up in the morning and you don't put yourself together, you don't get dressed, you just kind of put through your day. Your energy is different as opposed to a day where you actually get dressed, get yourself together. I mean, there's real data that really supports the fact that when you get dressed, you're more productive. You feel different, right? You And you know you're in the mindset of work and it's, it's different. So I really encourage my clients to get dressed or anybody really because I post about this on my social platforms get dressed right um it, getting dressed is a form of self-care it shows mm -hmm. that you're respecting yourself it shows others that you are respecting that your audience and who you're showing up for and it's so it is so important it, that energy is is important can I, I do a quick it. shout out here for a second to everything that Renee is saying so International Women's Day my mother is in the audience today I just want to shout her out because that's exactly her mindset when we were kids getting ready to go back to school in September, right? It was always a big deal around going to get your clothes for back to school. And it was, if you, if you feel good, if you feel confident, that's what you'll project and you're going to show yeah. up as your best self. Yes, yeah, absolutely. That I have carried that with me my whole entire life and do the same things with my kids and wholeheartedly believe that when you take care of yourself and invest in yourself, it's reflected. People see that. Yes. Yeah. I want to say like now it's a women's day, but it's, um, it should be women's day. It should be everybody's day every day. So I think it's for women. It's, it's not that there's necessarily something wrong with the men, but women have to show up. They have to take a seat. They have to show up. And this is one way that we can do this. Amazing. I, I remember my mom putting on lipstick, going out to take out the garbage. You know, I always say, what are you doing? You're just taking out the garbage. And she said, oh, I always need to look good. And, you yeah. know, for, for other people to see me. So that was the, the attitude. So um, Carrie has a question. Uh, oh, she's saying, don't look at my office, please, on your screen. And then she's saying that uh, I work in a community health center and there is stuff everywhere. My question is, what have been some big areas in your career that you have had to overcome? This is a great question. And I don't know, Rene, do you want to, um, to start and then we'll go around? What are some barriers in my career? Uh, well, so I've had two, right? My pre-entrepreneur and entrepreneur. Um, so I guess a barrier for me as I talk about my entrepreneurial state is just that I needed to, what I would recommend to anybody starting a, a, a business is to create your audience before you're ready to start your business. I, I left my job um, at a point where I just felt like I needed, to, I needed to go, right? I didn't have time to build and create the audience. I didn't even really know what I wanted to do, but I knew that my situation was no longer working for me mentally. I just did not want to deal with that. And so, you know, I've spent two years really building, uh, building my audience, build, getting my name out there, building a market. Whereas I never launched Blockbuster Pharma products before. That was my background. So I knew that you need your, you need to really create an audience, have people ready so that when your product or your service is ready, you have a warm audience ready to accept whatever you're giving them, whether it's your, what your, your, your service or your, your product. So my, my thing with your with anybody starting a business is to have your uh, build your audience before you're ready to, to launch. Perfect. And what about you, Mette? I would say, um, like, again, creating the space, feel you're worth it. Um, take your space. If, if, uh, if Carrie is in a very cluttered space right now, it, uh, first thing that doesn't cost any money is uh, to start cleaning up and giving space for something new to come in. And feel um, feel that anybody that comes into that space, it's worthy um, having a good space to come into. We all deserve it. So start with the self worth. And any barriers in your career? Did you feel at any point that you had some 
Or I just, like, when I, I've always thought, oh, my God, my English is not good enough, or I'm not good. Like, there's all those uh, voices that you have, and you will continue having the the, the self, the doubts. But my, um, courage, uh, like, what I encourage people to speak to that voice, like, what is that voice saying? And is that actually the truth? Like, ask that voice, is that the truth for me? Mm -hmm. the, it just the imposter, what? yeah. Yeah. What about you, Teresa? What yeah, barriers? People to speak to me when they hear that voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As a coach, you know, this is what I do, right? It is I help leaders and other high achievers to unleash their unique talents, skills, and gifts. And then key phrase here, get out of their own way so they can lead a purpose-filled life or become purpose-driven leaders. And for me, I would say the biggest barriers that I have faced in my career have always been my own barriers that I have put up. They have always been my own um, fears. And I would say the biggest one is thinking too small or playing too small. I mean, I, I just I gave you an example earlier of, you know, when I launched my business, I was I was playing within my own network still. Uh, the people that I was talking to were the were already within my own network. I wasn't thinking big enough. I wasn't thinking how big could this be? How many people could I reach? How might I achieve that? So I think, you know, I I, I have had a very successful career. So I, and I feel like anything that I have generally had to overcome has been a mental block of my own that I've had to work to overcome. So what would be your advice? Uh, think big, think outside the box. Um, from a growth perspective, what would you say? Sometimes it's a matter of dreaming actually, Joanna. So, you know, it's kind of, you think big, think outside the box. Well, how do you do that? Well, that's actually dreaming. That's actually using your imagination. That's actually tapping into what do I really want? What do I really want? Ah, like if you actually say what you really want, most people won't even say it. It's too scary. Who do you think you are to dream that big? Right? Right. Put a lid on that stuff. Once you get that stuff out, whoa, now you might have to take action. Right. Whoa, what if you tell somebody that, right? We're so full of fear around judgment or failure. Yes. What would people say around us if we think that big? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just to piggyback on something that Meta said as well, is those limiting beliefs, right, that we, that we talk about all the time. It happens in our style as well. It happens in how we show up. So that's a conversation that I have with clients as well. You know, they say, oh, I can't wear, my knees are too fat. My forehead is too big. My armpit is too, what, what any body part that you have, somebody has a limiting belief about that and why they can't wear a certain item because of it, right? So as Meta said, one of the part of our conversation is challenge that. Really? Who, how is, is that true? Who said it's true, right? And to really work through some of, some of these limits that we put on ourselves and to be okay with, I'm okay. This is what I like. I'm going to try and I'm going to wear this. I'm going to give it a try, right? Because this makes me happy, right? And really tuning into what makes you happy. What do you like? What makes you smile, right? And not being so worried about what other people think, especially about our style. You know, when we are confident, when we, when we have the courage to, wear what we want and to march to our own drum, it gives others the courage to do the same thing, right? It empowers other people like, wow, she's rocking that. I wish I could do that. Or wow, she looks fantastic. That's amazing, right? So to really challenge those limiting beliefs that we have and, you know, push through. I mean, it takes work, right? You, you take small steps each time. It takes small steps, but I encourage you to take those steps and to challenge those beliefs. And I think also like uh, there's room for all of us, like uh, women, like not be competitions necessarily. There is, we all have different gifts to give. Like there's a lot of coaches, there's a lot of designers, there's a lot, but there's room for all of us. We all come with something unique. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. That is such a great point. We're all different. And it's our, and that is our secret sauce. That is what is attract. That's what attracts your ideal client, the people, your, your tribe, that's what attracts them to you. It's the fact that you are different or you speak to me or you understand my background. 
And that, and when we own that, that is when we are so much more powerful. We can stand up in our power. Amazing. So I think that's uh, Anouk's uh, uh, question. Can you give one piece of advice to help women shine bright through these different times? A small change that can make all the difference. <laughs> That's a, uh, that's a loaded question because you want to, you know, those small impacts that you can make, uh, the simple things in, in what you do that make a great impact. Sure. So I have something. And of course, um, so we're all virtual now, right? So we have, we're not doing the face to face. So virtual is our platform. So my thing is, let's utilize this platform that we have, because this is, this is our networking tool. This is what we have to use, right? So I, when you're virtual, I suggest one thing, I have many tips, but one thing is wear color. Wear color so you stand out on your calls, right? You want to be memorable for the right reasons. People see and hear. Turn your camera. When you're in your meetings, cameras on. So people can see you. They hear what you say. Um, you know, out of sight, out of mind. And the fact that you're not in the office, by the water coolers, at network networking events, this is your platform. And the other thing is there's much more visibility now because we are virtual. Because people can, it's easy for them to just join your call as opposed to having to fly in for your meeting. So it's a great opportunity to advance your personal brand. So utilize what we have and show up. What about you, Mete? I would say show up for yourself every day too. Like, um, like be who you want to be. Buy yourself flowers. <laughs> be good to yourself. Feed yourself well. Get your exercise in. Do the little things that you actually can do every single day and set some intentions for yourself every day. Perfect. Theresa? Yeah, I would say, um, and it's along the lines of both of these things. Both of these things can be this. But one of, um, one of kind of my guiding, it's not necessarily a principle, but one of the things that guides me is to set intentions and then to be intentional and show up in line with that intention. And I choose different ten intentions depending on the day. So sometimes, particularly with my kids, because I have two teenagers, it's be patient. And then I write it down and then I very intentionally show up that way with them. On Zoom, it can be be present. So to Renee's point, have your camera on, Absolutely. look in the camera, Absolutely. talk to the people. Don't just right. be there. Don't just right. be there in the background. Don't just listen in on what's happening, right. Right? right? But there's lots of ways that you can be intentional and show up in line with your intentions. And one of the things that I think can help each individual is really know yourself. What are your unique strengths? What is, talk about your presence. What is it about you that is unique to you? And then be intentional about that. Use that strength, use that uniqueness and actually lean into it and be intentional when you are engaging with others around that particular thing. That's amazing. And that's hard to do. You know, it took me a while to actually look in the camera and I was just looking anywhere else because I didn't want to look in, you know, the lenses of my camera and then you know, like I took some practices and uh, like I, I talked to some people, to some coaches, and they said, you you really need to look into that camera when you talk to people. Otherwise, uh, you know, you lose them. So that that's something that uh, that we can do as well. And Joella, I'd just like to say to what you just did right now is being vulnerable just to make to it's OK. You it's know, okay. We all have our things and it's a, it's life is a learning platform. Yes. 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 And it's, yes. it's okay. Yes. Yes. And, and we're learning. And that's what Theresa said from the beginning, you know, it's a journey, you're learning and everybody can be a leader. Everybody can learn everybody. So, so it's not just, and we are so hard on ourselves. Sometimes we just have to continue to learn and continue to educate ourselves and look for, you know, um, events like this, where we can learn from others. And from experts around you. Yes. Yes. So um, I had a question for uh, Renee, but I will ask Rosanna's question because I'm so curious about the answer. So Renee, is it possible to overdress for a role? Um, I think so. I think what's important is that you understand. So there are a few things we'll talk about overdressing. You have to understand your industry, understand your company culture, 
and then you need to be appropriate for that. Um, in terms of being virtual, now I don't know if the question is talking about maybe other people are wearing sweats and hoodies and you want to look present yourself. Well, I don't think that's overdressing. I think that is more being appropriate and others just choose not to. But I, I want to encourage you to don't don't limit your and don't dress how you how others are dressing, but dress how you want to feel. Dress for the position that you want and dress for, you know, remember that it's your audience as well, right? So you're dressing for yourself, you're dressing for your audience. And it's it's how you communicate who you are, what you ex how you expect others to respond to you and to react to you. So as long as you are within the the expectations of your your company culture and your company i think you're fine perfect thank you so much we have a question from indira a time is flying i mean we should do this you know uh, again uh, sometime as we said it's not uh, every march uh, eight we can do anytime we want um <laughs> so uh, Indira, thanks all of you, you know, for sharing your personal stories. Would you be able to share some tips on how you were able to break the glass ceiling and stay motivated? Mm. That's, that's a, a loaded question. question. That's a good one. I, I, I'll, I'll tackle it first. Um, I, um, I was in what seemed to be a really good run in my career at Microsoft. I'd been there for six years. I had uh, learned a lot in my time there. It was an incredibly amazing company as far as investing in developing leaders. So I had a lot of great training and growth there. Um, and I made a decision after I was there for six years, I had been promoted twice within a year and a half once when I was on mat, well, actually twice when I was on mat leave, one in my first trimester. And then at the end of my, um, uh, actually it wasn't, yeah, at the end of my mat leave, um, I was promoted again and I got back and six months later, I decided to leave the organization. And the main reason I decided to do that was because it was clear to me that this was not going to be an organization where I would be able to be the kind of leader and mother that I wanted to be at the same time. And it was clear because I had been scheduled to go on three back-to-back -back business trips in a row. And the expectation was that I would be at each of them. And it made my stomach turn to think about even doing that. Um, so it, I, I wasn't interested in shattering any ceilings there. I was interested in carving a path for myself that would work. So I left and I joined a small startup that was backed by some larger corporate organizations and created, along with three other leaders there, an organization where I could be the leader I wanted to be and also be the partner and mother that I wanted to be. So even though um, it was a corporate environment that I was working in still, um, I was able to create the conditions because I was surrounded by people who shared particular values that I had. And at the time when I joined there, we had a male leader, a guy named Simon Jennings. And one of the things that so impressed me about him, he was a single dad at the time. And on PA days, he brought his kids into the office. And we set them up in front of a television with a we, and it was like, this is, this is the whole hog guys. Like, you know, I'm bringing my kids in because it's a PA day and they're with me. And that gave everybody freedom to bring their kids in on PA days. PA days became, you know, a kid day at that company. Right. And so for me, it wasn't about shattering as much as it was about creating. Right. Amazing. Anything, uh, uh, Renee, anything to add? I think for me, for shattering the glass ceilings at my in my corporate role, it was really about, I just, excellence was my benchmark. I just always held myself to a very, very high, um, high standard. And I always, I was always driven to outperform, to be the best, to shatter all kinds of records. And so and not to say that that's anything I would recommend to everybody because that puts a lot of, of stress on you. But I was driven internally. I just, I just wanted to be that person. And so I was always motivated to do more, be more. 
over deliver, be very thorough. And even some of the, even though I was really hardcore in my career and really helped me to, to build that out to my, my final role as a national sales director, some of those same skills still transfer into my, as an entrepreneur, right? Still very driven, still want to excellence as my benchmark, as wanting to do more than my clients expect or want. And it's just a part of, I guess, of who I am and how I want people to receive me and, and the, the, the service and value that I am able to, to deliver. And I can say that's exhausting as well. That that's yeah. sometimes it's, it's really it exhausting on you. It's tiring, it's right? Because yes. you're always trying to be more, right? I know exactly what you're saying. What about you, Meta? Anything that you're seeing in this corporate world where you are? It's, it's even more so when I moved, when I moved to Canada and I was like watching how women, like the system is just not as easy to be set, like set up for women that wants to either have a leading job or be an entrepreneur. Um, the infrastructure is just not there. There's a lot of commute time and it, it makes it a lot, a lot harder. So I was looking for books that was um, written by women, but that not just had the career, they also had kids and that you can actually have both. You don't have to choose between the two. And when I first started out here 15 years ago, there was very, very limited the, the, the books that was even out there written by women that had made it without sacrificing their kids. So yes. I looked I looked to that. Um, but then I had my in my drive, um, and also when everybody put me down, I would get back up. <laughs> so. Thank you so much. This this has been so inspiring, and thank you for your answers. And uh, I know we have some prices to give, and I know people are waiting, and they need to go back to their uh, to their day. And uh, uh, it's uh, we have three minutes to one o'clock. So um, Peter, if you can share, perfect. Thank you so much. So these are our door prices. So I will I will ask each of you to say a number, and then Peter will identify the person in uh, in the little spreadsheet that uh, he has there and then we will make sure that uh, the, you will you will connect so uh, we have a, a free package of more joy uh, from Mete so Mete uh, what what would be one uh, one number from 1 to 45 I'm going to say 11 11 so who's the 11, lucky 11, winner 11 and the winner for that one is going to be Helen Perfect. So we'll be in touch with you, Helen. Perfect. Okay, so Rene has a free 30 minute style consult, but you can also uh, find that on her website and uh, that we put out there. So uh, who's the lucky? Uh, what's the number, Rene, first? You are on mute. Sorry about that. 25. Perfect. That's my birthday. Uh, 25 so um oh my goodness you asked a question to anka is it anka the winner for that yeah anka anka and uh she's here yep yes perfect oh awesome hey okay. awesome so we'll put you in contact theresa what's your number um i'm gonna go with number seven Perfect. And that's a free individual 90 minute value exploration coaching. And uh, Theresa doesn't offer this. Uh, so this is a special, special prize. Samira is a winner. Who's that? Samira. Samara. Okay, yeah. perfect. Samara is my student at U of T, so I'm very happy for her to connect to her with you. Excellent. Uh, oh, that's great. Thank you so much. And then we have also a prize. So I thought that I should put myself in there as well. We have a free new GMP product owner course. And my number is um, 29. Okay. And that would be Kristen. Perfect. Okay, amazing. So thank you again. Thank you for your prizes. Thank you for your advice and for being here with us for International Women's Day. And uh, now, Peter, back to you to wrap up the session. Thank you, Joanna. A wonderful session. And thank you very much, Meta, and Teresa, and Renee, for all your great uh, insights and sharing and being so open with all of us with, some, with the questions and, that we were asked. So thank you very much. 
enjoy the rest of the day uh, from International Women's Day. For us, just to wrap up very quickly, we have our another webinar coming up. I forgot to change the date coming up on that. So this is going to be later in March, on March 26th. And uh, Trish Lynch will be joining us talking about OKR, so objectives and key results. So a little different of a, of a spin on it, but uh, looking forward to having Trish. She's been a good friend of ours for a number of years and uh, she'll provide some very interesting insight for OKRs. And then just to wrap up again, thank you everyone for attending. It was so nice to see so many of you here. If you wanna find out more about what we're doing, please uh, check out our website and join our community, what well, most of you have. Remember, we are also offering a free 30 minute virtual coffee. If you want to discuss your product questions, just email us at info at newgenp.com. Uh, besides Trisha's uh, OKR uh, webinar, that we have on the 26th. On March 31st, Joanna and I will be on projectmanagement.com talking about uh, value delivery. Looking forward to that. And we have a course at University of Toronto virtually right now, a two day, well, it's a four half day course, but two days in total, starting on April 19th and going through the 27th. That's um, two half days on each week. So with that, thank you very much. Have a great rest of your day and we look forward to seeing you at one of our events or uh, the next webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your day. Thank you. Thank you.